Hey guys, welcome back to A Guide to Making Indie Games. Each week I show a little bit of the game I'm working on, as well as sharing some helpful tips on how you can make your own indie games. Finally, today is the day that we finish our prototype. Just as a quick recap, we've really just been testing ideas and seeing what sticks so far. My goal is to make a speedrunning platformer, so the last couple weeks have really been about figuring out the most important mechanics. So the concept of finishing a prototype is kind of weird to understand. I've seen the question asked all the time, when do you know if your prototype is complete? And the honest truth is that a prototype doesn't have a finish line. By definition, a video game prototype is just the base model for which everything else gets built upon. A finished prototype is actually just a finished game, if that makes sense. In a lot of ways, the entire process of making a game is also prototyping. You prototype level design, menus, animation systems, everything is just testing ideas until something works. And that's especially true for indie game development. So when do you know if a prototype is complete? I actually asked this question to my Discord server, the link is in the description if you want to join a bunch of other cool developers, and the general consensus with them is that there is no clear end in prototyping. You really just have to set your own goals and boundaries that allow you to move on to something else. Here's my line of thinking, prototyping is is the process that leads to decision making. You test all sorts of things and use those experiments to decide what's fun and what isn't. I'll give you an example. For me, I know my basic platformer prototype is done when I have a satisfying enough character controller. It's not a concrete answer, but honestly, the most important part of the first prototype is figuring out if this game is actually worth making. So really, all I've been doing is throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks, but today is the day that that I really figure out what this game is gonna be. Will it change later? Most likely, but the only way to push forward is to make some decisions now and move on to the next thing. It's actually been really insightful making these videos because I've gotten a ton of great advice from you guys already. For example, it seems like a lot of you agree that the shooting mechanics I tested just aren't working. Because this game is about racing through levels trying to get the best possible time, having to stop at any point feels like we're straying away from the original vision. So here's the decision I had to make. There are two directions you can take platformers. The first we're gonna call player platformers. This is where the actual fun of platforming comes from the abilities that a player has. An example could be Dead Cells, where everything revolves around what weapons and mechanics you can use instead of the platforming itself. The other kind of platformer we will call world platformers. This is where the player's abilities stay basically the same throughout the whole game, but instead it's the hazards and environments that shake things up. A really good example for this is Mario, or Battle Block Theater, where the actual challenge comes from the changing environmental hazards as you get to harder levels. All this to say, I think that originally I was trying to make a player platformer when I really should have been working on a world platformer. Does any of that make sense? So here's what I decided. Instead of giving the player all these different mechanics to keep track of, I'm gonna keep things very simple. I want the player to be focusing on one thing and one thing only, getting through the level in the fastest possible time. The only mechanics that the player will have is running and jumping. The rest of the fun will come from using these simple mechanics in different environments. After that's done, I feel like we'll be in a pretty good place to finish the prototype and start actually building out the rest of the game. So back Back in the project, I started taking apart the mechanics that I don't want anymore. It's always a good idea to save all of your code even if you aren't using it. You never know, you could end up needing parts of it later. I just want to get back to the fundamental jumping and running and really refine that till it's perfect. Lunar Complex suggested I add coyote time to my game and I think that's a great idea. If you don't know what coyote time is, it basically just gives a slight buffer to jumps. So hypothetically, if a player were to run off of a platform, they'd still have have a small window to jump. It's not something you can notice just from watching someone else play, but it does have a pretty big impact on making a platformer that feels polished and modern. Along those same lines, I gave more control to the jumps, so the height of a jump is now dependent on how long you hold down the button. It's small details like this that go a very long way in improving game feel. After that, I decided to throw in one more mechanic to add just a bit more depth to the gameplay. I'd love to add Breath 
of the Wild or Celeste style climbing in my game, I think it could work really well when it comes to finding multiple ways of completing a level. If you're going to make a speedrunning game, having multiple ways to solve problems is pretty much key. I want to give the player as much freedom as possible, so I think a climbing mechanic could really help with that. Implementing the climbing was fairly simple, although it did lead to some interesting problems and glitches. The most challenging part of this was really making the climbing feel satisfying. There's a lot more to consider than I thought, like how far should the player be able to jump from a wall? How long does the player have before they run out of stamina? Refining stuff like this will most likely happen as I build the rest of the game, but it's still important to keep it in the back of your mind. The climbing ended up being pretty solid though, so I'm happy with how it came out. I still wanted a faster and more dangerous option for down climbing, so I threw in a super simple wall slide. It was really just a matter of changing the physics material on the player to have a bit more friction. After that, I feel pretty happy with this prototype. I think for the sake of moving on to actually building the game, having these simple mechanics will add a surprising amount of options for speedrunning. So now that we have everything we need, it's time to do something fun. If you missed last week's devlog, we created the character design for the main character of my game, Junebug. I think a great way to cap off this prototyping phase is with a bit of animation. So I got to work on animating Junebug. The nice thing about using smaller sprites is that they are so much easier to animate. I first worked on an idle and walk animation, which were only a few frames, but it's still really nice to finally see a bit of motion in the game. I also made a one frame jump sprite. Right now, I'm basically ripping off Mario's jump, but a lot of these animations will be changed later down the line. Especially this climbing animation, what even is this? But that's fine, adding life to this game through animation makes a really big difference, even if it isn't perfect just yet. And just like that, I'm feeling pretty happy with this little prototype. There are a lot of areas that still need improvement, but it wouldn't be a prototype if it didn't have its quirks. Now I feel like we're in a good place to start making tile sets and testing level designs, so look forward to to that in the next devlog. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already for a new devlog every week and join our discord server to share your own game projects. If you have some bonus tips or thoughts on prototyping, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Peace.